Hey there, Oconiacs. This is Dallas from All My Favorite Things from the Screen, and I'm doing good. I've got a full theory on who I think killed Bunny and why. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, but even now, I'm changing my mind on who was where and why, but I'm sticking to my guns on this version of the story until it's proven wrong. Also, please, poke holes in my theory. We're in this together trying to figure it out. If I'm overlooking something or digging too far on something you think doesn't make sense, let me know. And don't worry, the Arconia Crime Syndicate makes an appearance. Before we get into it, don't forget we'll be giving away $50 in official Hulu merch at the end of the season. All you have to do is be a subscriber, leave a like, and comment on any of the season 2 videos. It is truly random, so the more you comment, the more likely you are to win. But enough of that, let's get into it. In order to figure out who killed Bunny and why, we first need to go back into season one with loose ends and the idea of corruption in the police. We know that there are shady people not doing their job within the NYPD. This is by the fact that Tim Kono's talks report was not submitted, nor was his phone submitted for cellular exploitation. Why? I can only assume that there are bigger illegal dealings going on in the Arconia and that ruling Tim's death a suicide is the easiest way to sweep it under the rug. Looking into his phone and tox report would show conflicting information and that's not what they want to happen. The podcasters are successful in finding the true killer of Tim Kono but, but people involved in the legal trade including Teddy Demas, and in the reproduction of art from inside the Arconia, are not happy to hear that their building is now in the eye of the public. Multiple black market dealings have been moving in and out of the Arconia since the days of Prohibition. Now they have self-proclaimed Arconiacs drawing attention to the building, literally standing outside with signs. Is Alice a posh woman from London, or even a poor plumber's girl from Sussex? I don't think she's either. I think she's just a painter employed by those working the Arconia black market to sell and replicate art. I think her accent is fake. Even though I know her, the actress herself is European. I just think it would be a funny bit to have her real accent be an American accent for the television show. They do crazy things like that. But back into it. I believe that Alice was asked to recreate a replica of the Rose Cooper for Rose's grandson and an illegitimate child who has kept his identity hidden from most of the world. Only those in his family truly know who he is. Like his grandmother, who is more commonly known as Lenora Folger. When Lenora tells the story of Rose, she states that she was declared dead, not that her body had been found. I believe that Lenora killed her alter ego and came back for her painting years later. This person is Howard Morris, a man whose secrets hold more power in the building than Bunny did in her life. He states that he wishes he had a painting like this to Uma and seemed very hard in trying to please Lenora more than anyone at the celebration of life. I think this was an attempt to appease his grandmother who had disowned him as it would show her in a bad light even all these years later. But in order for it to be replicated, it would have to be seen and not many people have been in Bunny's apartment. We know Uma has and though Howard pretended that he has not seen the painting before, he would have in order to bring Mrs. Gambolini to Bunny's retirement party. Howard isn't going to walk into that room and not notice such a balls forward painting. Whoever it was would have had to go in, take a picture, and then give it to Alice. But even with all that, it would be hard for Howard to do all of this on his own. He needs muscle, and this comes in the form of his partner, also known as Nina Lynn's partner, Jared, who likely uses his contacts to help facilitate illegal dealings. After hearing Bundy would not step down, he could not use his influence in having the building board president in his hands, he said exactly what he meant. Bunny had to go. Without the knowledge of Nina, he first contacts Cinda to let her know that she will have a juicy story waiting for her outside of the building, knowing she's talked bad about the podcasters on Jimmy Fallon. 
he notifies his contact in the department, Detective Kreps, telling him that there's been a murder in the building before it even happens. This is why we hear the sirens before Mabel even heads downstairs. I else feel like there's still a couple of loose ends. Loose ends? Then, he is only able to contact Oliver and Charles as they are official tenants in the building. Mabel's phone number is likely not listed, hoping to catch them running out of the building, red-handed so to speak, all to set up the demise of the podcasters. Howard attacks Bunny to get the painting back, and it's supposed to be staged as if it was done by Mabel. Jared at the same time enters Mabel's apartment through the catacombs to retrieve one of her knitting needles. Bunny fights off Howard, and we know she works out. I believe that is literally the only reason we saw this frame of her working out, to say that she gave Howard the black guy. Injured, but not stabbed, she grabs her keys, which have been shown quite a few times, and heads to the closest person, Mabel, where she assumes the podcasters are still celebrating. She uses her master key to enter Mabel's room, and instead comes across Jared, who stabs Bunny with Oliver's knife. Now, I think it will be revealed that Mabel has a false memory that she actually went to her room, saw the door was open, and pulled out her knitting needle, and at that moment, Jared flees via the floor in Mabel's room. Bunny, stumbling, approaches Mabel, and she stabs her. Enter Charles and Oliver, and then the cops. I also believe the final words of Bunny was not 14 Savage, but Hidden Passage attempting to tell her where her killer had fleed to. He went through the Hidden Passage. Now there are some holes here. This is not bulletproof in the least, but here are a few things that might fill some of those holes, even if Jared did not text Oliver and Charles to get out, and it was Detective Williams. It could be Detective Kreps using his partner's work phone. I don't think this person is Oscar or anyone trying to help the podcasters. If this was the case, they wouldn't be trying to keep information from them. This is why I say this person, whoever it is on the other side of the phone, is not on our side. I think Kreps was put on this case to get a guilty verdict on our podcasters. This is Detective Williams' new partner. He hasn't been her partner before. He was put on this case for a reason. Cinda hinted at his past not being the best. And let's not forget, there is a sign above his head that literally says corrupt. I also think he had the podcasters meet in Bunny's apartment so another piece of incriminating evidence could be placed. Jared is not a popular choice for the killer, I will admit. People think that it's not an exciting story. I've gone back and forth between him and a few others, but I think it's him mostly because of his size. Not only do I think he has the most plausible story, but it's his size. He is larger than everyone, I think. This frame is taken from above to make this person look bigger, but you can tell this is a very tall, very large person. They've got some broad shoulders. And the person that we see in the hallway with Lucy also had very broad shoulders. And I think that he is the most likely person to be so agile and be able to move so quickly. This scene that focuses on the feet of this person in the arc catacombs, I've said it before, but it seems to be some type of facing movement. I was in the military, I was in marching band, and I can't think of any reason that anyone would make this type of movement if it wasn't ingrained in their mind from some type of military or martial arts. And that fits Jared. Although I will admit that people think, hey, this could hint to Mark, but he has no motivation at all. No links to anyone. Not enough information has been given about him to even be pertinent to the story. He's just a guy in the background. We literally know nothing else about him. He plays an instrument. That's nothing to go on. We're too far in the story and we don't know enough about him. Well, why is Howard involved if he's not the killer? Couldn't have been Alice or someone else that attacked Bunny? 
yes, but something tells me that Nina did not give Howard that black eye, and as I've thought for months, Howard is the person who left the note on Oliver and Jan's door. That had nothing to do with the painting or the death of Tim Kono. This is just to not bring attention to the building in general because of illegal activities. I think this is a case of attempting to kill two birds with one stone, getting a family painting and gaining more control of the Arconia. Now, I know some of these ideas have been set in pieces, but I tried to put it all together in an attempt to make sense of it all, but not be too complicated. Well, that's it. That's what I've got. Please let me know what you think. Is it possible? What's the more likely scenario? Please leave all your ideas below. A quick shout out to some of my subscribers who always give me great input and come up with some great theories of their own. Amanda Woods. Morticia Graveside, CM, Gloria Marie, and Phoebe Faye. You guys are the real rock stars, and you keep me on my toes. Everyone else, I'm sorry I can't remember your names, but those are the ones that come to mind as I'm writing this out. Thank you, all of you, and everyone else for going on the journey with me. I watch each episode right when it airs, and I'm going to try and see if I can go live for the last two episodes. I'm also working on a video of who I think will be most likely to die. I may get that out before this episode next Monday night or Tuesday morning, however, whichever time it comes for you. But if not, it will be out right along with next episode's review. Either way, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think down below, and I'll see you on the rooftop.